What's up guys, Brendan here from AddedGaming.net. Welcome to the new Double Dagger LE build video for post April 15th. If you like builds with high sustain, uh, great group support through healing, condition removal, and might stacking as well as good damage, you are going to love this build. Okay guys, so at first I was just going to do an update video, but I decided to redo the whole build video because I've been receiving a lot of comments if this build is still viable and people wanted to uh, just see a po post April 15th patch build. So I'm redoing the whole build video. There are some changes uh, because of some of the rune changes and things like that. Traits are fairly similar to the last build video. Um, but I wanted to also go over some of the changes that came into the April 15th patch and make you guys aware of what has improved with the Double Dagger Ellie build and some things that were nerfed, but mostly it's pretty much all buffs that we got in the April 15th patch, which makes me excited uh, because I love the Double Dagger Ellie build and just to see it being a little bit stronger um, is, is good in my book. One thing I do want to say uh, right off the bat about the differences between PvE, World vs. World, and PvP is that um, unfortunately, I mean, I like this build in PvP, and I use this build all the time in PvP, but I'm a little disappointed at the fact that they don't let you customize your stats as much in PvP. They're, for some reason, the Valkyrie amulet um, is different than the Valkyrie stats in PvE, and I really love the Valkyrie stats in PvE. It's kind of a shame that they don't let you customize your stats a little more in PvP, and uh, I think this build would actually be a lot stronger in PvP. I think people would use Double Dagger at least more in PvP if you had a little more, more control over your stats. Uh, so that's one of the things I love about the Double Dagger uh, Elementalist in PvE and World vs. World is that I can really customize the stats. So use the build in PvP. I love it. It received a few buffs in PvP as well, which we'll go over in a second. But I just kind of wanted to say that. I also want to say that this build definitely is effective in every single aspect of the game. You will have some people saying, you know, that the build doesn't do enough damage in PvE. And that's mostly... Speedrunners, I mean, if you love speedrunning, that's fine, but I like to play builds with a group of my guildmates that I enjoy. I like to, to support my guildmates in that way, and that's just not the way we play. Um, so if you're looking for a speedrunning build, this is definitely not a speedrunning build. So let's go over some of the changes that came into the patch. Now we have Burning Speed. Burning Speed is in our Fire Attunement, and this was changed to where it evades attacks when we use it. So this helps, um, when, we're, when we're using Burning Speed into a group of people, this helps, you know, eliminate all of that damage that we were taking before trying to get into a group of people. So now we can safely use Burning Speed into a group of people and start a rotation uh, without really any danger of doing so. Frozen Burst in our Water Attunement, that received a Blast Finisher, so now Frozen Burst is a Blast Finisher. I will go over Might Stacking, which is a very, very important part of this build later on in the video, but... I will say that Frozen Burst is not something that I include in my Might Stacking rotation because for one, it's too difficult to get Frozen Burst, just there's a time thing, you know, your fire field is up for only so long and you can't get all of your Blast Finishers in that time, in that amount of time. So if you were to go to, to water and try to use your Frozen Burst Blast Finisher and try to use your other Blast Finishers, you're going to run out of time. Not only that, if you're trying to go into water to use your Frozen Burst as a Blast Finisher to increase your might stacks right at, you know, right at the, out of the gate. Um, you're going to put your water attunement on cooldown, which is very risky with the double dagger alley build because you have to be very precise with the timing in your water, going into your water attunement to heal. And you will, you'll come to the conclusion that there's, there are times that you definitely die because you didn't manage when you're going into your water attunement. So it's kind of a risk trying to go in there, try to use frozen burst, but what it does is, when all of our other Blast Finishers are on cooldown, we have that option to go into water and use our Frozen Burst Blast Finisher when there's a fire field around, when there's a water field around. Uh, so it helps us maintain our Might Stacks a little more, but it's not something that I put into my like starting rotation of Might Stacking. Signet of Restoration got a huge buff in PvP. Now before, they actually minimized, they split the skill between PvE and PvP. And they made the PvP healing amount a lot less than the PvE. Now they are making the PvP healing for the Signet of Restoration equivalent to the PvE amount. Uh, which is a huge increase actually because they nerfed it quite a bit uh, when they split the skill. So that's a huge buff for this build in PvP. 
Armor of Earth, one of the cantrips in our build that we use, has a, they reduced the uh, cooldown by quite a bit. The uh, base cooldown before was 90 seconds, and now it's 75 seconds. It's almost the base cooldown now is almost at the level of the uh, Armor of Earth before when it was traded. When it was traded before, it would be a 72 second cooldown. Now Armor of Earth is a 60 second cooldown when it's traded for the 20%. Uh, faster cooldown on cantrips. Fiery Greatsword actually, we use this in World vs. World, but it actually received a nerf. One of the great things about the Fiery Greatsword before was using your Fiery Rush and then uh, using your Lightning Flash on top of a target and they would absorb, you know, instead of the damage being spread out, all of the damage would be stacked on one spot. And uh, it was a huge, it was just a huge burst of damage, especially in PvE. Um, that was actually buffed, so now when you use your Fiery Rush and you use Shadow Step or a Teleport skill, then the uh, skill is actually aborted, it's actually cancelled. So the Fiery Great Sword is probably the only buff, or sorry, the only nerf that we saw in this patch. Cleansing Water. Cleansing Water is a trait that was also split from PvE and PvP, where PvP, they put an internal cooldown on Cleansing Water. This is the trait that we use. Then they put a 5 second cooldown on this trait. But now there's no more cool. There's no more internal cooldown while in PvP on cleansing water, which is extremely powerful because uh, before we were we were just condition cleansing monsters in PvP, and they put this internal cooldown. It did definitely hurt the build. You, you started seeing less and less double dagger alleys in PvP. So I'm really glad that they removed that internal cooldown from uh, that trait. Anyway, that's about all the changes that came to the double dagger alley. Now let's jump into the stats and the traits and I can show you some uh, mechanics of this build like might stacking and go over the skills as well. Okay guys, so let's go over our stats. Now before we do, I'm going to put a little, uh, I'm going to put two screens up here and do a little comparison of PvE and PvP stats and tell you why um, I, I'm a little bit frustrated with why they don't let you customize your stats a little more in PvP. Now, when you're talking about SPVP, one of the things you're worried about most is condition damage. Now, if you look at in PVE, I have seven, I have over 17,000 health, which helps minimize that condition damage. Uh, especially if you think about like an engineer putting five stacks of confusion on you. You know, in PVP, you're gonna drop. It doesn't matter how much toughness you have. You need more vitality. And I wish that they would let you select vitality over toughness on the Valkyrie am amulet, especially since the Valkyrie stats in PVE are. Uh, vitality instead of toughness, which helps out more. I really don't think toughness helps out an elementalist at all because our armor, uh, our armor rating is so low anyway. You would need like probably 2,000 plus toughness to even feel it on the on the elementalist. So I wish they would let you get vitality more. It definitely helps the double dagger Ellie, which is probably why I used the double dagger Ellie double dagger Ellie more in World vs World nowadays than I do as PVP. Um, but it is still strong in as PVP. I, I really like it on the new deathmatch uh, map as well. Uh, but it's definitely, I feel that it's definitely stronger in World vs. World. And uh, I just wish that if they would let you customize your stats a little more, they, I think you would start seeing tons of double dagger alleys out in PvP. Now, that to the side, let's talk about the stats. Uh, before we get into the stats, one of the things I want to talk about is uh, how this build works and why uh, I choose the stats that I choose. Now, this build is somewhat dependent on might stacking and it kind of happens naturally in the build throughout your rotation. Um, so what we can do in this build is we can sacrifice some power in this build for healing power. So we're sacrificing about 200 power in this build to get uh, roughly 420 healing power. And uh, the healing power is almost a necessity in this double dagger Ellie build. I have, you can see on the screen, I have around 720 healing power. That is, um, I find the sweet spot of healing power in this build to be in like the mid 700s and that's where you need your healing power to be. Because any more than that, you're starting to overheal a little bit and you're, you're wasting some healing power. So you can scale your healing power down a little bit and put it into other stats. Um, if, you're a little, if you're lower than mid 700s in healing power, then you start to feel like your sustainability is really dropping. So mid 700s healing power is like the sweet spot I think for this build. So that's why I sacrificed some power for healing power. But the thing is, with my Sigil of Bloodlust, uh, which is our first Sigil, you gain 10 power each time you kill a foe. You can stack it up to 25 times, so that's 250 power. Uh, along with our Might Stacking, 
And uh, even in World vs. World, if you have like Guard Slayer or something like that, you're getting even more power back. Uh, then, you know, the just dropping 200 power isn't such a big deal, but gaining that 420 extra healing power is a huge deal in this build. And you will really feel, if you go any lower than mid-700s, you're at like 500 healing power, you're really going to feel your sustainability drop in this build. Another thing with the stats other than the power and the healing power is the crit chance. This build naturally gives you fury throughout our traits, and we'll go through that um, when we go through our traits. So what we can do is we can sacrifice precision in, in this build and go for a defensive stat like vitality, which will help us against condition damage. Now, we don't really need a lot of toughness in this build because uh, we have things like armor of earth and mist form, uh, just ways to, to uh, block the um, really high power builds. So... With the double dagger Ellie, you're going to suffer more from condition damage. So the vitality helps way more than the toughness does with double dagger Ellie's. So I can sacrifice crit chance. You can see my crit chance is at about 19%. But with Fury on, my crit chance is going to be almost 40%, which is perfectly fine. Um, so what we what we do... Actually, this is a good time to talk about the runes. Uh, because some people like runes of strength in, on the double dagger Ellie. And I actually like... Runes of Rage. Now, Runes of Strength help you might stack better and give you more power, uh, but I feel like the Double Dagger Ellie does might stacking perfectly fine on its own, and I would sacrifice a few extra stacks of might for, you know, 30% Fury duration and the 5% damage while you have Fury duration on, and uh, the extra Ferocity as well, which uh, helps with our crit damage. So, Fury... Fury for me is more important than having a few extra stacks of might, and I think it in the, you know, as you're playing, um, as you're fighting people, that it's going to benefit you more to have that Fury duration rather than just having the uh, extra few stacks of Might. Uh, that's my own opinion. I really love Runes of Rage, but, uh, th I mean, there is an argument for Runes of Strength as well. Now you can see my stats on my armor is Power, Vitality, Ferocity. Now, you know, this is like Berserkers, but I can sacrifice the Precision and go Vitality instead because of what we were talking about earlier uh, with all of the Fury that we're going to get. So we go Power, Vitality, Ferocity. Uh, so that's all. it's all Valkyrie gear on our armor uh, with the Runes of Rage. And for our amulet and for our rings and uh, accessories, I go Clerics, which is Power, Toughness, Healing Power being the, uh, being the main stat. And this will put us up into the 700s of healing. This is where we're sacrificing our power a little bit. Um, so we're like I said, we're sacrificing about 200 power. Uh, and this is where it happens. So we're sacrificing the power instead of being the main stat. Healing power is the main stat. And uh, it really balances out well between power and healing power. For our sigils, again, we have Sigil of Bloodlust, which will help us gain back some of that power that we sacrificed. And we have Sigil of Battle, which helps us stack might even more when we uh, switch attunements. It does have a cooldown of 9 seconds, so we're not going to get it on every attunement swap. Uh, but we'll get it every single time it comes off of cooldown. We will get that 3 stacks of might. So that does it for the stats. If you have any questions about the stats or uh, suggestions, make sure you are leaving them in the comments below. All right, guys, so it is trait time. Now, if you've seen the build videos before, the trait system, or sorry, the traits are exactly the same. The trait system has changed a little bit. So we have two in air magic. We have Zephyr speed, move faster while attuned to air. And this trait will actually tie into a trait later on. We have Zephyr's Boon, RS Grant Fury and Swiftness when applied. That's 8 seconds of Fury, 6.5 seconds of Swiftness. And uh, this is um, one of the bigger sources of our Fury. So we have, two, we have two Auras in the Double Dagger Ellie build. We have the Frost Aura in Water. And we have in the Air Attunement, we have Shocking Aura as well. So those both together would give us 16 seconds of Fury. Water magic, we are going to start backwards. The first trait is Cleansing Water. Remove a condition when granting regeneration to yourself or an ally. And this will tie into other traits as well. Um, so this is one of the strongest ones. And again, remember, in PvP, the internal cooldown has been removed. So every time you apply regeneration to somebody, you will be removing a condition from them and from yourself as well. Bountiful Power, deal more damage for each boon on you. Now, we usually have about four or five boons on us at most times so that's uh, even though it's a minor trait we're getting about a four or five percent damage increase from this trait 
Soothing Disruption, cantrips grant you regeneration and vigor. Now every time we do a cantrip, or we use a cantrip, we are getting regen, which will cure a condition from us. And the vigor ties well into our Grandmaster trait in Arcana, which is Evasive Arcana. And what this does is when we're in combat and we dodge, uh, we create a spell We create a spell depending on what attunement we're in. Now if we're in water, it's going to give us a cleansing wave, which is a nice big keel and a condition removal. If we're in earth, that's a blast finisher. It's like a mini churning earth, which will help us with our might stacking. And we'll go over that um, a little bit later. Back into water. Healing ripple. Heal, near, heal nearby allies when attuning to water. So you heal your, yourself and nearby allies for a little over 2,000. And remember, um, because we have... Elemental attunement, when we gain uh, we gain a certain boon every time we go into attunement. If we go into water, we gain regen as well. So just going into water, we're curing a condition from ourselves and all of our allies. And, uh, and we're getting the healing ripple from it as well. Cantrip Mastery, reduced recharge on cantrips. Since we're, we are running all cantrips, it makes sense to get the skill. And like I said before, Armor of Earth is now 60 seconds traded instead of 72 seconds. Uh, so that's just, that's a pretty big deal because Armor of Earth is a, a very powerful utility. Soothing Mist, regenerate health while attuned to water. And this is uh, this actually ties into a trait uh, a little later on as well. Uh, Lingering Elements, this is actually the trait that ties together Sapphire Speed and Soothing Mist. Now linger, Lingering Elements, attunement bonuses linger after leaving that attunement. So if we go into water, you see that we get the Soothing Mist. Um, if we go into Earth... We still have the soothing mist on us, and uh, basically, it just it keeps us that re uh, regeneration going on us. Where if we didn't have this trait, that regeneration would have left already. Same thing with air. If we go into air, we get the uh, the movement speed from air, and uh, if we switch attunements, then we still keep the movement speed. And uh, if we didn't have that trait, the movement speed would have been gone. So uh, those there's very good synergy between those. Renewing Stamina, gain Vigor when you deliver a critical hit. Again, this uh, this ties into Evasive Arcana, but not only that, you know, Vigor uh, is just... Dodging is one of the best damage mitigation abilities you can do in the game because, you know, you can have protection on and somebody hits you, you're reducing the damage, but if you dodge that ability, you know, you're not taking any of that damage. So to have the Endurance Regeneration on us, and uh, pretty much all, all, all the time because we're going to have uh, Vigor which is a six and a half second cooldown on a five second uh, internal cooldown. We're, we pretty much have Vigor on us all the time. So having that Endurance Regen on the Double Dagger Alley build is uh, very powerful and it's something that's very much needed. And the last trait, Arcane Fury. Gain Fury when you switch attunements. So this also applies into the Runes of Rage that we were talking about earlier and uh, sacrificing our Precision for Vitality to help us with Condition Damage and just Damage overall um, and gaining that Precision back with the Fury. So anytime we switch attunements, you know, water, earth, air, it doesn't matter, we're getting fury. So that does it with the traits. If you have questions, um, then make sure you leave them in the comments below. I will say that there has been some discussion over uh, stop, drop, and roll this trait. And it's the thing is, is it is quite a selfish kind of uh, condition, but burning and, or sorry, a selfish kind of trait, but burning and chilled is are some of the most powerful conditions in the game, especially chilled against the double decker alley when we are attunement dancing and we're trying to cast as many spells as possible. And that ties into our signet of restoration as well. Chilled can really affect that. And burning is one of the strongest conditions uh, in the game. So this is really good when, um, if you're like solo roaming or you're trying, you know, you're, you're not trying to support your group as much, but I really like, cleansing water because I just like supporting my, my group in that way. And uh, anyway, I thought I would mention that because there's been some discussion over that. Okay, so now we're on to the part I love about doing build videos and that's showing you guys how the build works and giving you some tips on how to be successful with the build. Uh, before we go into the actual skills and the rotation for the might stacking, I'm going to talk about the different setups for the different aspects of the game. Uh, for PvP, this is my setup. I have Signet of Restoration, Mistform, Armor of Earth, and Lightning Flash, with the, which all help in uh, PvP. Now, Lightning Flash, one of the strongest things about Lightning Flash is uh, in Earth. You can use Churning Earth, 
And before it goes off, you can lightning flash somewhere else, and then the Churning Earth will go off uh, in that area. I use also Glyph of Elementals in, uh, in PvP because, again, the Fiery Greatsword was nerfed, so the Fiery Rush with the lightning flash won't, uh, won't work anymore. I actually have to get out of combat. <laughs> but, uh, so I don't use the Fiery Greatsword anymore. Um, so this is, this is my build set up for PvP. Okay, so I'm finally out of combat. Now, for World vs. World, it will be exactly the same, but I'm going to change to the Fiery Greatsword. Even though the Fiery Greatsword was nerfed with the Fiery Rush, the Greatsword offers extreme mobility in, uh, in this build. And in World vs. World, mobility is priceless to have. If you run into a sticky situation, you need to get out right away, or you're chasing somebody uh, in World vs. World, then it's something you definitely want to have. And, uh, you know, if your Zerg starts coming around the corner, you need to get out right away. The Fiery Greatsword will help you do that. So it's a very good ability for World vs. World. Now for PvE, there's a few things we can change in PvE because, uh, honestly, Lightning Flash doesn't offer us anything anymore. Especially since we're not going to be taking, taking the Fiery Greatsword and using the Fiery Greatsword trick with the Lightning Flash. What I like to bring is Arcane Wave. Because it's another blast finisher, so it's going to help me stack might for my group even more. So my group will get more might stacks, and it has a little bit of damage as well. I also like to get rid of Armor of Earth, uh, situationally, I'll say. And what one thing that you'll want to bring a lot is the Ice Bow. Because the Ice Bow um, is really good against structures. And there's a lot of structures in Dungeons and Fractals, like the Graveling Burrows and Escalonian Catacombs, and the... Ice Elemental in the Fractals, just to name a couple. And a trick you can do with the Ice Bow is the Ice Storm. If you put that right on top of the uh, structure, then all of these little all of, all of these little um, ice bullet thingies are going to land right on top of the structure. And uh, if you use it in Ascalonian Catacombs, I'm sure you've seen it before, you'll see how fast the Graveling Burrows melt. And uh, it's... It just makes some encounters much, much easier using the Ice Bow. So make sure you bring that in PvE uh, when you need that, especially when you're going against structures. Time to talk about Might Stacking, which is very important with the Elementalist. If you don't know how Might Stacking works, if you're new to Guild Wars 2 or you're new to the Elementalist, basically what happens is you put a fire field down. And within this fire field, you can use blast finishers, like my arcane wave. And when you use a blast finisher inside of a fire field, you get what's called area might. And that gives you three stacks of might to yourself and anybody around you. So that's uh, one of the goals we're going to achieve with this build. Now let's talk about our rotation real quick. Usually I run around in, in air because, you know, you can use shocking R to get uh, swiftness. Uh, and if you're running around in world versus world or something like that, you can also switch the water and put your frost R on for the swiftness. Uh, as well, so switch switch back and forth between those and get your swiftness while you're running around. When you switch back into air, you'll get swiftness again. Then you can put your shocking aura and get swiftness. But anyway, when we approach an enemy, what you want, what you want to do first is you want to use ride the lightning because that's a gap closer, and uh, we're gonna close the area between us and them. So that's a good way to catch up to people. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use updraft. What updraft does is it knocks the enemy back. And uh, it puts them in a perfect distance to use our Burning Speed and Fire. Um, burning Speed and Fire has a certain distance, and it's something you're going to have to get used to when you play the Double Dagger Alley, because you're going to have to learn how to aim this skill. Uh, it's very important to hit with this skill, because if you don't, you're going to be losing uh, you know, quite a bit of your DPS. So when we use Updraft, you can see the distance that, I, that happens with Burning Speed. The Updraft, if we're right next to him, is going to knock us back in about a distance that's pretty much equal to burning speed. Um, so you'll, you'll get the hang of that as you play it more. But uh, that's why updraft is actually really important for the whole setup of this of this uh, rotation. So again, we're going to use Ride the Lightning to close the distance. We're going to use updraft to knock the target back. And after we use updraft, make sure you pop on your Shocking Aura. And this does two things. Basically, it gives us the 8 seconds of Fury. So when we get into fire, we'll have a little over... We'll have about 12 seconds of Fury because we're getting the... Fury, the three and a quarter second Fury from switching attunements. Um, that's what we get in our traits. And that's going to guarantee that we are that we have a good chance of critting with our fire skills. So once once we do that, ride the lightning, updraft, throw on your shocking aura. 
you're gonna want to pop into fire, then use your burning speed, and then uh, hit, I did it a little short, but hit the target with your burning speed, and then use your. Usually, what you want to do is if you hit the target with your burning speed, you want to use fire grab right away because the target's gonna be on fire, and fire grab does more damage to burning targets. And after you do that, you want to use your ring of fire. And put your ring of fire down. This is your fire field. This is where we're, we're going to use all of our blast finishes in. Um, our blast finishers in this build are Earthquake, our number four in Earth, and Churning Earth, uh, which is our number five. Now, we also have from Evasive Arcana, if we dodge in Earth, we also do like a mini Churning Earth, which is also a blast finisher. So we can do that in the fire field as well and uh, get some might from that too. So... Again, let's go over this rotation real quick. You're going to want to use Ride the Lightning to close the distance. Then use your Updraft uh, to knock the target back. And then when you switch to Fire, that's about the distance you need for Burning Speed. And then hit him with your Burning Speed. Then you're going to want to use Fire Grab. And then you put down your Ring of Fire, which is your Fire Field. Switch to Earth. You're going to want to use number 4. And then dodge backwards. And one thing about dodging is you need to make sure where you end your dodge roll uh, that's the most important part because the the uh, ability that happens, the, little, the mini churning earth that we get from Evasive Arcana, goes off at the end of our dodge roll. So you have to make sure that you end your dodge roll within the fire field. And uh, that will give you the might. If you dodge outside of the fire field, you're not going to get might from it. So when you put your ring of fire down, just move up a little bit and then you can dodge backwards and uh, guarantee that you're going to land inside that ring of fire. After that, you're going to want to use Churning Earth. You want to use Churning Earth last because it takes so long to cast. And uh, then after you use Churning Earth, if you're in PvE, you can use Arcane Wave in the fire field as well. And uh, you'll get Area Might from that. If you're in PvP or World vs. World, when, you, when you're using your Churning Earth to finish your rotation, uh, you know then you can look around it's like, okay, where do I want to blink? I'll blink there then use my Churning Earth there. So let's go, I'll, I'll stop the recording real quick, let my cooldowns come off, and then uh, then we'll go through the whole rotation. It's a little bit to take in at first, but just watch the whole rotation, and uh, if you have to slow it down a little bit, then then go for it. Uh, anything to get you to understand it, and uh, make sure if you, if you still don't understand, leave comments below, and uh, I can answer uh, any of your concerns. Okay, so my cooldowns are up, and uh, let's look at the power first. We're at 1,838 power, and uh, when I'm done with this, we'll see how how high that how high we get. So, one more time, you do ride the lightning to close the gap, updraft to knock the target back, throw your shocking aura on to gain the fury, go into your fire, use your burning speed to hit the target, use your fire grab to uh, hit the target while it's burning, put your ring of fire down, which is your fire field, and then go into earth, use your earthquake. Dodge and get your evasive arcana churning earth and that'll give you a blast finisher as well Then use your churning earth and if you're in pve uh, While you're using your churning earth use your arcane wave in the fire field as well or if you're in pvp then use your uh, Lightning flash and uh, target target a certain area that you want to hit with your churning earth. Okay, so here we go Okay, there we go. So, I'm not actually sure. I used Updraft and it didn't get knocked back. I don't know, maybe some lag or something. Uh, but he should have been knocked back so it's easier to hit with my burning speed. Anyway, so I had 19 stacks of might. You can see my power is up to 2468. With another stack, it would have been over 2500. And remember, we started this off at 1800 something. So, we gained about 700 power with our might stacking. And that's why my stacking is so important in the build. You know, we sacrificed that little bit of power to get all that healing power. But, uh, you know, that's uh, we gain all of that power back pretty much through um, through our might stacking. So, again, if you have any comments or questions about the might stacking and maybe you're still a little confused, just uh, leave it in the comments below and I will uh, be sure to answer to answer your questions. Okay, so the last thing to do is to talk about the rest of our skills that we didn't talk about in the rotation. If I'm going to auto attack in this build, I'm going to use Lightning Whip in my air because uh, honestly, it just for me, it does the most auto attack damage. Now, 
We have also we also have lightning touch. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but it puts weakness on the target. So if you're going against a like a berserker build or a high power build, then putting that weakness on will limit their damage uh, a little bit. We can go into fire. We have Drake's breath, which stacks burning. Uh, it does a little bit of um, power damage. Really, it's it's not really all that great. In water, we have. Cleansing Wave, which uh, gives us a nice heal and uh, removes a condition from us and our allies. And uh, actually, our turning, our, sorry, our turning, our, our evasive arcana when we dodge in water while in combat is actually a cleansing wave. So that's, you know, it's basically the equivalent to a cleansing wave. So that's also removing conditions and healing as well. So again, if you remember at the beginning of the video, I said it's, it's important to time when you go into water because you don't want to just pop into water whenever you want. You really need to make sure that uh, you're low on health and uh, you need to get in there to remove a lot of conditions or you need to get in there to heal and uh, Make sure you are managing your your water attunement wisely We also have frost aura which we talked about a little bit before this applies chill to people when they hit us and gives us swiftness and fury as well Now chill is a very powerful condition of the game. So don't don't overlook that We also have frozen burst which is also now a blast finisher uh, like we talked about before with the changes and uh, it also applies three seconds of chill in that in that area. So uh, again, chill is very powerful, and uh, it shouldn't be overlooked. Now, Cone of Cold actually does usually does a decent amount of damage. I don't have any fury on, so I, I didn't really crit much. Uh, but it it actually does a decent amount of damage, and it heals your allies uh, for oh, nine. It says 940. Now, it's not a huge heal, but it's a, it's just a little bit of support you can throw in there. And Earth, we have Magnetic Grasp, which is a very important skill because if somebody's running away, um, you can use your Magnetic Grasp. It immobilizes them, then you can use it again to jump there, and then you can use your Earthquake to knock them down. And uh, you and your, your group can uh, start pummeling in from there. We also have Ring of Earth, which adds Bleeding or Cripple. The Cripple's nice, the Bleeding's really doesn't matter a whole lot because we don't have any condition damage. Um, but the Cripple can help you out a little bit. Anyway, that's all the skills on the Ellie. Um, the rotation is really important. Make sure you learn that. And uh, magnetic grasp is pretty important. And uh, uh, especially the water as well. When I talk about water management, make sure you are managing that while you're playing. Well, I want to thank all of you guys for watching my Double Dagger Elementalist build video update for post April 15th. Um, if you have any comments or questions, make sure you're leaving them below. I, I try to respond to everybody. If there's too many com comments, then maybe I won't. Uh, but I, I do get on every day and check the comments and try to reply to everyone that uh, left a comment. If you like this video, please subscribe for more build videos and Guild Wars 2 content. And uh, share with your friends and let them know what we're doing here at uh, Attic Gaming. Thanks for watching, guys. Condition in the game on this build except for fear. We can do weakness. It's not a direct application, but we can do weakness through using a blast finisher in poison field. doesn't mean that we will, but... We do apply every single condition except for fear, I think, in this whole game. Um, anyway, so if you want a build that's very heavy in condition damage and it has a lot of conditions.